does it help, Laura, that Collins likes to hit more backhands than forehands when she takes on a player like Schwan? Yeah, no, in a lot of ways, I think so. I mean, she has that lovely down the line. Had to change the pace up there, Schwantek. More than a match for that type of ball. Well, that is terrific. Let's just take a little look at their ground stroke speed. backhand wing and Collins gets a, a better and better bead on that. And she can go heavy through the body and she can also go cross. This is awesome. This is unplayable stuff here at the moment. early she takes it to hit it that hard as well. the recovery back end off the return. Shot. We've got a match on our hands. It's an unbelievable backhand return. Keep that backhand quiet. Right. Radvanska getting down to that beautifully. Schwantek. <laughs> Set's not done yet. Straight at the way this has gone, right on the feet of Danielle Collins. And did well on the forehand. We got one on the set point, and it was spectacular. Collins takes it, six games to four. Guys, for me, and it had nothing to do with her, in all honesty, for, from my standpoint, it, it was the double faults from Danielle Collins. Untimely double faults that led to the breaks. I guess if you possess a backhand like that, Laura, you don't need a coach. But I sort of feel like Danielle's quite happy to figure things out on her own. Yeah. It's max 
maximum racket head acceleration as well. Oh, it looks like Collins is even further in the court trying to return the second serve than she even was in the first set. Sensational. That's absolutely brilliant. Two games from a place in the final of the Australian Open for Daniel Collins. It's got it. It's too good. Another ace to add to the collection. That's six now. To keep the score line close has been hit off the court from the first point. Three out of 20, what a point. Down match point, just surviving. Overwhelmingly confident performance from Danielle Collins.